if only one version of the facts is uh, is allowed, then that gives a, a huge incentive to um, wealthy and powerful people to seize control of of things like Wikipedia um, in, in order to um, to shore up uh, their um, their power, and they do that. Hello and welcome. This is Lockdown TV from Unheard. So it's one of the 10 most visited websites in the world. Millions of people check it every day. It's almost become our external repository of knowledge. But can we trust what we read on Wikipedia? One person who should know and help us understand that is its co-founder, along with Jimmy Wales. He's called Larry Sanger, and he joins us from Ohio. Hi, Larry. Hello. Hi. Good to be with you. Let me go straight in with the big question then. Um, can we trust what we read in Wikipedia, the website you co-founded? Well, you can trust it to give a reliably establishment point of view on pretty much everything. Um, uh, can you trust it always to give you the truth? Well, it depends on what you think the truth is. Um, the uh, what What many of our media sources today and Wikipedia included seem to assume is that there is only one uh, legitimate defensible version of the truth on any controversial question. Um, of course, that's not how Wikipedia used to be. Well, let, let's get into that because that's fascinating. How, how do you feel that it's changed from the moment when you were involved to the modern version of Wikipedia? When Wikipedia was just entering the public eye, um, it was still committed to neutrality, actually. And, and for several years, like between 2004 and 2009 or so, Wikipedia actually was a, kind of an important player in the conversation about how new media were going to emerge. People were talking a lot about, about um, collaboration and, and um, the neutrality was, was one of them. But it was, it was very interesting in that you could go to an article about a U.S. president or about some hot button issue um, or, or uh, some um, controversial news event and you actually would see multiple different points of view reasonably fairly laid out. And if, if that weren't the case, then people would get on, on what's called the talk page of Wikipedia, and they would actually battle it out. And, and different sides would ha have a chance of, of having um, their points of view heard. Um, so... That, uh, moreover, it was a lot easier back then for people to participate. Um, so I'm talking about what I have in mind is about 2004, 2005, just as Wikipedia started to become a household name, essentially. Um, and uh, yeah, even then, you could get on an article, at least on a, a second tier topic. Maybe the most important uh, topics were already like unmanageably difficult to for the ordinary person to participate in. But there were lots of opportunities where there, there were not people who were sitting constantly on an article and trying to make it say what they wanted it to say. That, that was already going on, but not nearly as bad as today. Now, especially over the last five years or so, Wikipedia has, has changed, as you indicate, quite a bit. Um, so first of all, um, yeah, I mean, uh, it's really hard to participate. On a lot of articles, if you go in and you make any edit at all, um, you will be sternly warned, if not just kicked out. And it doesn't matter if it's a completely positive, positive edit. This sometimes even happens on articles that are, are you know, unimportant. Why? Um, why? Why is that happening? Because I think there is a lot of influence. Wikipedia is known um, now by everyone to have a lot of influence in the world. Um, and so there's a, a very big 
nasty, complex game being played behind the scenes um, to make the articles say what somebody wants them to say, right? Well, people, I, people like, actually employ paid consultants, mm -hmm. don't they, to constantly be tending to their Wikipedia entries. So it's, a, it's become the kind of battleground for the official version of truth. So it, there's a huge value to what your Wikipedia yeah. entry says. Right, right. I mean, there are, there are companies called like Wiki PR and, and things like that, where, where uh, paid writers and editors will go in and, and change articles. Um, and um, maybe there's some way to make such a system work, but not if the, uh, if the players who are involved and who are being um, paid or not identified by the, by name, they actually are supposed to be identified by name and saying, well, we represent this firm. If if they are officially um, like registered with some sort of um, Wikipedia editing firm, um, but they don't have to do that because there is no requirement of real names. In fact, in fact, um, because as I say, it's a very complex sort of game. Um, there's all kinds of tricks that people can play to, to win it. Let's uh, look into some examples then, just to help people sort of understand what we're talking about. How about politics? I mean, one thing you've actually written about is that the entry for Barack Obama is very different to the entry to Donald Trump, which I suppose you would expect, they being very different people and very different parties and politics. But what were you observing there and what was it that worried you? Can I change the example? I'm actually going. I'm in the middle of writing a uh, another uh, blog post um, about Biden, for example. Um, so uh, the Biden article, if you look at it, has very little by way of the concerns that Republicans have had about him. So if you want to have anything remotely resembling the the Republican point of view about Biden, you're not going to get it from the article. And um, there there is like a, a paragraph, I, I believe, in, in, uh, in it is quite a long article about um, Biden. And so there should be at least a paragraph about um, the scandal um, in, involving um, well, the, the Ukraine scandal, let's just put it that way. It's very complicated. This involving Hunter and, Biden and, and his involvement. This, this was the topic of, that was much talked about, and there were questions over whether yeah. it was censored, it was banned off various social media platforms, the New York Post was involved. It was a huge deal earlier in the year. Exactly. Exactly. And very little of that can be found in Wikipedia. What little can be found is extremely biased and reads like a, a uh, defense counsel's uh, brief, really. How does that happen then? Is it because there are sort of teams of Democrat leading editors who are there to excise it if it gets added? Or is it that Republican leading people just aren't bothering to contribute? I'm pretty sure it's the first. Um, I think that there are a lot of people who would be highly motivated to go in and and uh, make the article more neutral, more politically neutral, but um, they're not allowed to. Uh, it's it's quite remarkable, considering that the neutrality policy is still in place. So anyway, that that actually is the uh, the second way, as I was saying, the second really big noticeable way in which Wikipedia has changed. What exactly does that mean? That it now represents a, polit a particular political viewpoint over all politics? Is that not just political? Not just political. Wikipedia is pretty reliably establishment um, in its viewpoint, whatever the viewpoint is, which is ironic considering its its origins from a couple of libertarians um, who. Uh, at least in the beginning, were really tolerant and open to all sorts of anti-establishment views being canvassed within the article. Um, on, so in, in, in what other ways other than politics does that establishment feeling come across? Well, let's begin with like um, Eastern medicine. Eastern medicine is, is basically called quackery. Um, 
often in, in uh, words similar to that, dismissive language, quite judgmental and so forth. Um, and it, it, it's done apparently without any compunctions at all. Um, and then when it comes to Christianity, um, the the viewpoint on Christianity given is the the uh, liberal one that would be found in um, mainline denominations and liberal Catholicism, as opposed to actual Bible believing fundamentalist type viewpoints. Now you might say, well, that's okay because that's the academic point of view, and so it is for for some academics, but of course, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of conservative academics when, it, when you get into religion. Um, and, and for that matter, it, it, you're, the, the point is not to, to describe the academic point of view. It's to, it's to canvas all the significant points of view, and especially when it comes to something as socially important as, uh, you know, how Christianity is portrayed by by Wikipedia, you would expect at least that that a uh, a more traditionalist view would be fully canvassed, at least represented. It doesn't have to be advocated or anything like that, right? But it has to be explained, and it isn't. Let me try and challenge you on this, um, Larry. So, is there not a sense when you look something up in an encyclopedia that you want the establishment view? I mean, you're, you, you're, it's a quick thing. You want to say what is the main establishment view on this topic that is sort of general consensus area. If you got to an encyclopedia entry and it had 10 different versions of truth and you had to trawl through all of them uh, and try and pick your way through it, it would be a lot less useful. Boy, uh, actually, I don't really think that's what you want. And that certainly isn't what I want. Just take, for example, issues in, um, let's just change the example, political issues, social, social issues like drug legalization. If you go to Wikipedia, um, you will get a, a, a typical progressive um, libertarian think tank view on drug legalization. Like um, it's a brief for, for um, what they call drug liberalization. So you, you feel like it's, what it, it's, it's gives too much weight to the positives of drug legalization? It's, it's, not, it's not just that it's too much weight. The problem is that, that when you look at an article about a topic like that, you actually are, are looking for the means of, of uh, deciding what you think about the topic, right? You, you want the tools. Um, so there is a reason why we want neutrality out of three different kinds of, of content out of journalism, uh, reference content, and textbooks. All three of them, we naturally expect them to be neutral, I claim. Um, and the reason for that is when we are getting the news, when we are learning, or when we are just trying to get some basic information for background in, uh, uh, in understanding a topic, in those sorts of situations, we do not want to be led by the nose, right? We, being free individuals, want to make up our own minds. And if we don't, then there's something wrong with us, I think. I'm, I'm just going to say that. Um, I think that, that uh, basically, if, you, if you're the sort of person who just wants to be told what your religion believes on the topic, who just wants to be told what your party thinks, um, or, or um, you know, what, what, your, uh, what the dictator thinks, um, then you're kind of in a bad situation. You're not fully human in that case. In fact, in situations in which that happens, well, the word for it is propaganda when it's systematic. And that's really what, what we're dealing with on Wikipedia. So you feel, now feel that Wikipedia represents propaganda? Well, I think all of the media does, but yes, I do. Let's talk about the last year and a half, if we can, because yeah. during this pandemic period, these questions of authority, knowledge, uh, official narratives, dissent have all really come to the fore, haven't they? And social media networks have really clamped down on anyone who had a different point of view on the pandemic. Uh, and we've seen a series of examples where that's gone into difficulty. 
First of all, the World Health Organization was recommending things that then the advice changed. We've recently had this so-called lab leak theory about where the origins of COVID came from, initially censored, now allowed, because it looks like a, a possible um, option. How? What role has Wikipedia played in that, do you think? Do you think it's been part of that sort of official version of truth? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, if you look at the articles that Wikipedia has, you can just see how they are are um, simply mouthing the the view of the World Economic Council or World Economic Forum and um, the World Health Organization, uh, and the CDC and, and, and various other establishment mouthpieces like Fauci. Um, they take their their uh, cues from them. Now it's it's understandable from their point of view why they would do that because um, they're simply uh, by their policies they are they're not totally restricted to, to secondary sources but that's what they emphasize they emphasize not the primary sources for information. So they don't, they don't look up tables of statistics and draw their own conclusions. They want to, to, to cite articles by journalists who have looked at those tables of, of statistics, right? Um, and not all journalism, like the Daily Mail is out. You can't, you can't um, cite the Daily Mail at all. You can't cite Fox News on sociopolitical issues either. Um, it's just it's a band now on on. Uh, so what does that mean? It means that um, if a controversy does not appear in the mainstream center left media, um, then it's it's um, not going to appear on Wikipedia. And you feel so, that was happening in relation to the pandemic? Yes. Yes. At least I've, I, I haven't tracked it very closely, but but um, to the extent that I have, yeah, that's what's going on. What would you like to have seen, I suppose? I mean, that's the difficulty, isn't it? When you have a rapidly evolving story like the pandemic and the lives are at stake and the kind of moral pressure is high, how do you represent things in stone or in an evolving article um, that are both reliable but also represent a variety of viewpoints? It's a hard thing to do. Well, uh, it, it is, uh, but it's necessary. Um, nobody said that that um, neutrality was going to be easy. So the real question here is, what would a neutral neutral presentation of information uh, about the pandemic um, be like? Well, for one thing, there are a lot of experts out there who are not going along with um, the the. Uh, prevailing establishment point of view. But there's a lot of Nobel Prize winners, distinguished doctors and so forth, whose views are not only not welcome on Wikipedia, they're literally censored um, on uh, YouTube and, and sometimes Facebook and Twitter, um, where uh, videos of interviews made with such people are are removed because they directly contradict the the narrative. Is it not a different website that you're describing, though? I mean, to try and do an, an encyclopedia of established facts or things that are sort of secure enough to put on an encyclopedia it seems like a different project than a website that hosts a spectrum of views on controversial issues. That's almost an encyclopedia of opinion, or it's a, it seems like a different kind of project. <laughs> but, uh, but don't you see, the fact that there are, um, th there are a, a variety of expert opinion on difficult questions where they, the truth is not clearly established, um, an encyclopedia of opinion, as you um, put it, is all that's possible. You can't have an, an encyclopedia of fact if by fact you mean something that all responsible researchers on a topic agree to, because it's often the case that um, there is disagreement among experts on all kinds of things, things that 
you know, you didn't, you might not think that there's disagreement about, but that's because, you know, again, um, the, the, uh, the media narrative on those questions is constantly being massaged and changed. And Let me throw out a different example to you, uh, which I haven't given you in advance. So uh, very sadly, John McAfee, um, the antivirus software developer died and already he, he, we are told he um, committed suicide in his prison. He was about to face extradition back to the US. Uh, I looked him up in Wikipedia and there it is. Uh, he committed suicide in his prison. That's uh, the end of the story. Meanwhile, as often with these rapidly moving events, there's lots of conspiracies online. Lots of people are uncertain what actually happened. He had posted a bunch of tweets uh, in the weeks before his death saying that if I uh, am seen to commit suicide, it, it wasn't what it appears. That's one of these tricky points, isn't it? What would you like the Wikipedia entry to say? What we have to realize in such cases is that if we, if we put one version of reality out there, then um, we are, first of all, manipulating what everyone is supposed to believe. In other words, we're making a decision for them as encyclopedists. Um, and second of all, and, and there's something wrong with that. Um, it, again, takes the, uh, the right to decide based on what uh, evidence is available, um, what we shall believe on such a question. Um, and you know maybe it doesn't matter that much how how uh, John McAfee um, died, but uh, altogether though there's a lot of uh, issues that do matter, and it really it, it, I mean and and this is this is our political lives right I mean we're talking about how we should think about all of the issues that that uh, inform um, how how we vote, how our representatives' uh, initiatives are going to be received by the public, and, and, and so forth. So if, if only one version of the facts is, uh, is allowed, then that gives a, a huge incentive to um, wealthy and powerful people to seize control of, of things like Wikipedia um, in, in order to, um, to shore up uh, their um, their power, and they do that. Is there a case, do you think, that the the era when Wikipedia was first attempted, problematic though it always was, was part of that so-called end of history moment where it felt like the whole world was going to be enveloped by a single ideology? It was a kind of high neoliberal period, and none of the political fractures that we have seen since were, were being felt yet. And it was this sense that we were going to be a single species with a single agreed upon version of truth. And all of the big questions had been answered already. And now, in the years since, we see how wrong that was and how all those fundamental questions are very much still in play. And it's almost like we don't have a single agreed upon truth anymore. So a project like Wikipedia is doomed. I, I know what you're saying. I mean, uh, even Recently, I, I mean, there was this sense you'd go to different cities around the world and people would have all, you know, similar points of view and the restaurants would be similar and the hotels would be similar. And it's just like there's a, a global monoculture. I think that was the phrase that people used. Um, uh, but, but even then, I mean, clearly it wasn't. Um, because, uh, I mean, and that was reflected by Wikipedia itself in those days. Like I said, um, you could go to articles about, um, you know, religious topics, political topics, social topics, whatever, science, uh, hot button science topics. And, and uh, you would see a number of different viewpoints represented. So you don't feel that... that uh, uh our collective knowledge is fragmenting and is becoming more siloed than it used to be. You don't, you don't see a, a shift. 
one of the things that people were worried about around about uh, 2006, 2007 was that the rise of collaborative knowledge production that's radically open or social media, and these sorts of movements were going to fracture what we all know. Um, and uh, so there wouldn't be any one thing. And it is true that that um, th there are uh, semi-establishment voices like Fox News and the Daily Mail and whatever um, saying um, things that that uh, that the rest of the establishment sternly disapproves of. Um, so there is that sort of fracturing going on. But on the other hand, now there's this movement um, uh, that didn't exist back in 2001 to 2005, um, where, where voices are literally being silenced and there's a global enforcement of a certain point of view on issues like COVID, which is which is amazing to me, amazing to, to a, a libertarian or a, a liberty-loving conservative. That's just, that's incredible. So what, what um, will the effect of that be, do you think? If, if the attempt is to impose a single version of truth upon everybody, yeah. will people find different outlets to go to? Will there be more and more distrust of those mainstream sources? Yeah. What do you think happens next in this story? Some people, of course, want the law to step in and to guarantee that um, that there be freedom of speech on what are ultimately um, private but highly corporate um, outlets like Twitter, for example. I don't think that's going to work. I don't think that that um, Twitter is going to be forced. Um, the powers that be will not allow it to be forced to allow a wide variety of, of points of view there, and that would bother we, bother me if it did because it would it would mean that um, that there were government censors that were looking over the content of Twitter and making sure that it had the right balance or whatever, and that that would be much scarier than than Twitter itself. Um, censoring some conservative voices. Yeah, that's a problem. Um, the, the answer, and I hope this is the direction we're moving in, and there's some evidence that, that it is, is that we, we move back to a more decentralized internet. Um, so uh, when Wikipedia was getting started, the internet stood for... Um, you know, a, a plethora of independent voices. <clears throat> that's, that's what you win. It was like the Wild West, right? And, and um, we trusted outlets like uh, Facebook and Twitter and YouTube with, um, with our data and gave them, allowed them essentially to take over the media world. Um, and what we trusted them with was this was with our our liberty and our privacy that that basically they they weren't going to shut us down but they they stabbed us in a, in the back essentially larry let me ask you to conclude with this then do you think it's going to happen if we're facing this current crisis i think we can call it a crisis where our biggest and most powerful authorities are being censorious of dissent and people are increasingly unsure how much they can trust them, something needs to happen. Either it's going to be a clamping down even more and eventually people will give up, or what you're talking about or something similar might happen, a flowering of alternatives, networks. What do you think? Do you think it stands any chance of actually happening? There's a certain flowering that I think is definitely going to happen, and that is um, we are going to see more and more tools um, that allow people to act independently of, of um, big tech. Um, and in fact, I can, I can show you right over here in my corner one of the things that it's going to do. This is, uh, is here right down here. Hmm. What's that? This, this is a NAS. 
It's a network attached storage. Okay. Um, so what a NAS is, is a personal server. Um, it has, it's like my own Dropbox. It's connected to the internet. And I bought a really fast internet connection just so that I could easily and quickly, um, you know, uh, access this. Uh, it runs my, uh, my micro blog. So what you're saying is it's already happening. To some extent, you think this, this um, decentralizing process has already started. It has already started, and there's a lot of people who are really passionately interested in it. Um, and I think uh, the more that we demonstrate that um, that it can happen and how it can be accomplished, more people will um, avail themselves. It's it might be a, a long slog, unfortunately. Um, but I, I think eventually it, it will happen. Larry, thank you so much for your thoughts today. Absolutely. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. That was Larry Sanger, a co-founder, or he prefers to describe himself as an ex-founder of Wikipedia, which is one of the biggest websites in the world, uh, the encyclopedia many of us check every day. He says you can't necessarily trust it and that politics and the mechanisms they use to develop their entries have reached a stage where it represents only an establishment point of view and dissenting point of views don't feature. So that was really fascinating to hear from the man himself. Some hope at the end there that actually through some process of decentralization, we might be able to get past this monolithic version of knowledge and back to something more fluid. Thank you for joining and thanks to Larry. This was Lockdown TV.